Australia. And welcome to Life Support, the only magazine program that makes you the centrefold by laying all your problems bare for all the world to see. And has all the solutions to all the problems you never knew you had. Hey, enough of the generalities. Let's get into the specifics. Coming up tonight, I'll be showing you a wonderful way to help prevent sudden infant death syndrome. A little later on, Sir Gordy and I will enlighten you on plastic surgery to beautify a very private body part. That's right, Dr Rudy. As a modern woman, I like everything to look pretty. Can't wait for that segment. I'll bet. As usual, I'll be showing you all the stuff you really need to know to really live your life. And I'll be talking fertiliser when I head into the garden and show you a great new product. So, why don't we get into it? For years, the front line in the battle of the sexes has been that of the seat up, seat down question in the smallest room. Well, I'm going to show you how you and your lady friend will never have to worry about the toilet seat again. We've all seen one of these. The lids on these clever little bins open when you press your foot on the pedal. So why not apply the same technology to the toilet seat? Now, if you want the seat up, just put your foot on the pedal and the seat will rise automatically. Take your foot off the pedal and the seat will come down again. It's as simple as that and there'll be no more silly arguments about the position of the toilet seat and you'll have a bit more time to argue about the more important things. So take a tip from Todd and give your toilet the top treatment today. Armed robbery is a difficult art. Definitely the best part is being the driver. Of course, you don't want to use your own car. You could steal one, but that just adds to the risk as the cops will be after it. So what do you do? Go, go, go! Go, go, go! Just take a car for a test drive! Of course I'm not saying that women shouldn't have opinions and ideas. I'm just saying know when to express them. I find that it's best to minimise talk and moderate temperament. Yeah, you know, I really worry about the influence of shows such as Sex and the City. I mean, sure, the women go to fabulous parties, wear fabulous clothes and drink fabulous cocktails. <laughs> but at the end of the day, they're still really lonely, you know? And I mean, let's face it, in real life, Carrie's married to Matthew Broderick. I think you know what I mean. You know, there's a saying I love. It's in Latin. Cogito ergo sum solo. I think, therefore I'm single. Well, Penny, here we are at our seventh show. How are you feeling? Todd, I'm having a great time. But I've got to say, we are getting a lot of letters from middle-aged, middle-class people. And I want to help real people. So, if you're disenfranchised, disadvantaged, lost, homeless or just young, don't get your parents' permission and write to me. Because that's who I want to help, Todd. Oh, I hear you, Penny. Here at Life Support, we're sorting out the whole demographic. We're answering the questions, and you know the ones I mean, that other lifestyle shows can't. So write to us here at Life Support. Locked Bag 028. Crow's Nest. 1585. How's it? Dr Rudy here. Thanks to some breakthrough research by Australian scientists, we now have a very simple technique that dramatically reduces the incidence of sudden infant death syndrome. You just put your baby to sleep on his or her back. Never on the tummy. 
But even the best of us can occasionally forget that vital little bit of information. So here's a tip that will make sure your baby is never in danger. Simply get some chili sauce and rub it all over the sheet right where you put the baby's head. Now, when you put the baby to sleep on its tummy, the chili sauce will get in its eyes and it'll whack up screaming its head off. A convenient reminder for you to come in, flip over the baby and breathe a sigh of relief. Bye now. Each year, the United Nations declares which people in the world should be given a special cheerio. This year, it's the International Year of the Volunteer. Recently, it was suggested that every Australian should volunteer at least one hour a week to a cause of their choice. What this means is that you can volunteer yourself or others, safe in the knowledge that it's with federal and international endorsement. So, here's the scoop. Volunteer yourself for the fun stuff and others for the things you hate doing. For starters, volunteer yourself to look after kids during the school holidays. Mums and dads will be so relieved to offload their kids during work hours that they'll pay for everything. Start with the movies and then work your way on to fun parks and all the places that you want to go, like the brewery. Then, when you're feeling a little bit lazy and you couldn't be asked, it's time to volunteer somebody else. Just duck up to your local hospital and hire yourself an intravenous drip. Call your local church group, bung on your best victim voice and slap on some white face makeup. In a couple of hours, you'll have a bright-eyed god squad of willing cleaners and shoppers bustling around ready to execute your every whim while you're tucked comfortably in your favourite chair in front of the telly. You'll also need your drip when you go for the biggest volunteers of all, our competing lifestyle shows. In our heartless grab for ratings and the advertising dollar, most lifestyle programs will go to extraordinarily syrupy ends to bump up their ratings. So, if you want a new pool in your made over backyard, just write a fantastic letter about how you have cancer and it's your dying wish to have a themed swimming pool. I guarantee you'll have the ever cheery gang from one of those other do-gooder backyard makeover shows around to dig, cut, shape and trim your this into this backyard. The dying wish of a very special young girl. Join us next week when we visit... If you can put up with their inane drivel for an entire afternoon, you can look forward to hours of enjoyment just floating around in your new pool. See ya. When you first start wooing a new lady friend, trust me, nothing will impress her more than a picnic. Women love the great outdoors and overpriced sliced meats. I'll have some pastrami, thanks. Before you meet your lady friend, you should do a recce of your picnic location to make sure the spot you have in mind is conducive to romance. This is perfect. Plenty of sun, some trees and of course, soft grass. Well, this grass is a bit wet, but there's no need to panic. I reckon I can sort out both the dampness and the flatness problems with something a little more practical than a picnic blanket. Simply lay down some concrete. Pretty classy. Guaranteed to keep your bum dry and your wine glass upright. Practical and romantic. Well, the last thing you have to worry about is what happens if it rains. You don't want your date to turn sour, so why not provide a little bit of shelter? Our very own luxury, weatherproof, damp proof, flat as a pancake picnic spot. She's beautiful, isn't she? With all the advantages of a little bit of privacy. So you uh, come here much? Nothing like being in the great outdoors. You look lovely. Hello there. 
Dr. Rudy here. And tonight, Sagoni has joined me to discuss a very serious topic for you women. Yes, something the modern woman shouldn't miss. Did you know, Sagoni, that an increasing number of women today are electing to have plastic surgery procedures? Well, one procedure in particular, labia reduction surgery. That's right, Dr. Rudy. You see, many women feel that their rosebud looks more like a hibiscus, so they've decided to have it pruned. Quite right, Sigourney. Apparently, more women are looking at pictorials in such publications as Penthouse and Hustler and are convinced that this is what their body should look like. And we all know what you women are like. I mean, you see someone with a pair of shoes you like, you just have to have a matching pair. <laughs> so why should this be any different? It can't be all about aesthetics, Dr. Rudy. I'm sure many women experience discomfort from having curtains that need to be taken up. Only a very small percent. Labioplasty is mainly performed for the visual enhancement. And if you decide to have it done, let me say right here, well done girls. Elective surgery should be taken advantage of and is still quite the status symbol. So why put up with the embarrassment of enlarged labia minora when you don't have to? So what are the pros and cons of this surgery, Dr. Rudy? Well, when considering narrowing the lapels of your pink tuxedo, the most important thing to remember is that it is short to improve your sex life. Let's face it, your clitoris will be easier to find without all that surplus flesh getting in the way. Yes, I guess it does reduce the workload of your man. And who knows, reduced workload could mean cunnilingus is back in vogue. Or better still, wearing a bikini is back in vogue. That's right, no more butterfly wings. And you can enjoy the illusion that you now look normal, like a centrefold. So tell me, what are the cons? Well, there is some soreness for a couple of weeks, but after that, no loss of feeling whatsoever. Sounds so simple. Mm. But as a physician, it would be negligent of me not to point out that any surgery involving anaesthetic has a degree of risk. And a risk worth taking. So girls, why not get some labioplasty today? Because why be the way God made you when you could be the way Larry Flint made you? Bye now. Uh, never heard of it. No, never heard of it at all. Ooh, that's disgusting. They want to look appealing, so maybe that's why. Doesn't sound right. Sound terrible. I would say that their boyfriend or their husband or something like that was putting some sort of intense pressure on them to do something like that. If he doesn't like you for what you are, then he's not worth having. Especially if he's looking at porno mags. I think if you've got the money, do it. Balanced and informative segment, don't you think, Penny? Are women really doing that? Oh, yes. It's one of the most requested forms of plastic surgery. What's the matter with people? I've never heard of anything so stupid. Don't they realise that all of those images have been computer enhanced and airbrushed? I know. That's why I think the modern woman should never have any surgery like that. I'm glad some common sense prevailed. No need to have surgery when you can just airbrush yourself. Are you kidding me, right? Not for women who need it. Ladies, some simple flesh-coloured touch-up paint and a few evenly applied strokes means you and your man can enjoy the look of a petite protrusion. Are you seriously suggesting that women should airbrush their labia in order to give the illusion that they're smaller? Well, surgery just seems so permanent. And fashion is so fickle. It just makes sense to me. So there you go, ladies. A simple spray means that you can look and feel sensual without that six-week post-op wait. I think we should move on now. Oh, yes. What's in the next segment, Penny? I'm not sure. Um, let's take a look. Oh, g'day. Today I've got a great new gardening product for you. We all know the importance of recycling for the environment. Well, what better place to practice than your own garden. Just think of compost, grass clippings and manure. Well, now a company, Landmine Industries, has brought out a new range of products for your garden that are 100% recycled, 100% natural and 100% good for your garden. So, if you're doing a bit of repotting and you want to get a good fertiliser, well, for my money, nothing beats a good blood and bone. And this is it. Pole Potting Mix. 
Now, Pol Potty Mix is a Cambodian byproduct, and it's a full-bodied bag of rich nutrients that'll bring your garden back to life. It's good for pots, lawns and flower beds. So for my money, these remains remain unbeatable value. But unfortunately, it has been hard to find since the early 80s, and now it's almost impossible to get. But Landmine Industries are proud to announce Milosevic Mulch. Now, Milosevic Mulch is a Balkan bone meal and has a slightly coarser texture than the Pol Potty mix, but is much more refined than the cheaper brands like that African stuff. And don't be stingy with it, because there's plenty more where that came from. Now, earlier on in the week, I went out to the factory to have a look at how this little bag of wonder comes about. So this is where the process begins. The raw materials are broken down into different bins depending on origin and quality. I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but I just overheard them talking about the probability of a Macedonian product being available before the end of the year. So from those bins, the raw materials make their way down here. As you can see, this is where they're churned and broken down before being roasted in the furnace. I tell you what though, I'm a little nervous sitting up here, but I'd hate to see what would happen to a bloke if he fell in there. This is the reject bin. This is where all the bits that were too tough to break down go. Has anyone lost a ring? I've got no problems with it because uh, as long as it's uh, none of my family members or um, no one that I associate with or know on a, on a pretty close basis, people are, I guess, getting chopped up every day at the morgue, so it happens, everyone knows it happens, and um, it's something you just live with, I guess. I don't know, I just find it disgusting thinking about it. What are you going to do with me after I die? Put me to good use. <laughs> doesn't really matter if the dead people and the, the, the family, the relative is allowed it. I think that's all right. Yeah, it's better than using some more like uh, chemicals, that kind of thing, or poisons. I think we have to come a very long way in society before we can even start to look at those sorts of issues. Pretty interesting stuff, hey? And I'd like to thank the good people out at Landmine Industries for letting us take a look around the factory. I only wish more companies were so environmentally aware. Well, there you have it. Don't these daisies look great? For me, this is what gardening's all about. Perfect sunny days and the heady aroma of wet soil mixed with a good fistful of fertiliser. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be dead for quids. What a wonderful product. Wonder if it'll work on my sunflowers and pansies. Oh, believe me, it works. You should have seen the beautiful gardens we had back at home. But right now, it's that time again. That's right, Dr. Rudy. It's time to delve deep into the life support mailbag and improve someone's life. What have you got for us tonight, Sigourney? It's a letter from Zika of Plimpton in South Australia. And it's addressed to you personally, Dr. Rudy. How's it, Zika? Dear Dr. Rudy, she writes... I have just been given an adorable puppy for my birthday and have only just realised that it is going to grow into a huge dog. I am moving into a flat next month and want to know if there's anything I can do to keep a big dog in a small flat. Please help. Well, an unusual request seeker, but I have a solution. Why don't you borrow a simple idea from our ancient Chinese friends, but instead of just binding the feet, why don't you bind the whole pet for a petitely proportioned pup? Just remember to keep the binding tight and stick to crepe bandages, not adhesive ones, or you'll have a small cranky ball of plucked skin rather than a fluffy bundle of joy. Wonderful. There you go, Zika. I hope that solved your problem. I don't know why feet binding is an ancient Chinese practice. The modern Chinese woman would look adorable with petite feet too. But right now, it's on with the show. Because society is a structured community, we have to allow freedom of expression by all the people that are bound together by similar traditions, institutions or nationalities. 
which means you can get away with all sorts of shit in the name of tolerance. Let's face it, there are some religious groups that encourage polygamy, don't celebrate birthdays and don't like zippers. So how far out on a limb do you have to go until you've gone too far? Why not create your own religious outfit to suit the church of you? Just set up your own rules and attract similar spiritually disenfranchised folk and have a great time of it, all under the banner of your own religion. Remember, if somebody wants to question your religion, you are now fully entitled to sue them using the full force of the anti-vilification laws. Beer thanks, mate. I am the Grand Poobah in the Church of the Great Wazoo, and I can worship in this, my temple, simply by spending all day drinking beer, wearing Hawaiian shirts and smoking marijuana, and it's all in the name of religious expression. And the best part is, if you apply as an exempt organisation with the tax office, you don't have to pay a cent of tax. Can I get a receipt with that, please? Christmas is just around the corner, and I know many of you will be sending gifts home to your families overseas. Now, we all know that postage costs to some of these countries are really horrendous, so here's a way to ease the financial burden. When you're packing your presents, just make sure you include some of these some cheap helium balloons. They'll make your package lighter and cheaper. Well, I can't believe it, but here we are at the end of another program. Yes, the end of our seventh show. As good a reason as any to make a mezza. That sounds pretty exotic. It's a selection of Lebanese appetizers. Baba ganoush, hummus and tabbouleh. Oh, I like in a kebab. <laughs> Great. Just once, I'd really appreciate a dish from back home like babuti or hoenda pasti or even a simple plate of cheese and biscuits. Oh, Rudy, where would the fun be in that? In the eating. Better make sure you tune in next week. Oh, because we've got some more great ideas on how to make your life a little bit better. Until then, it's probably best not to do anything. Good, Good night, night, Australia. Australia.